If you need to set up a virtual matrix with X lights and Falcon player, it's super simple. It only takes a few minutes to configure an X lights and FPP. Really all you need is a TV or a projector and a Raspberry Pi. So why would you want to run a virtual matrix? Well, there's probably a few different reasons. Personally, I use them as tune tune signs. I have a TV that hangs my foyer window and runs off a Pi Zero. Uh, the biggest thing that's gonna that you're gonna notice with the Pies is the type of HDMI output. Most Pies are gonna have a mini HDMI, where the newer Pi Fours are going to have dual micro HDMIs. So you can actually do two TVs or two projectors or a TV and a projector all off a single Pi 4. The easiest way to get this all set up is probably just by hopping directly into X lights and configuring the controller in there, create a sequence, and then push all that to FPP to your uh, Pi directly out of X lights. So let's get going with that. So here we are in X lights. Uh, I don't have any controllers. I don't have any props yet. So we're kind of starting from scratch here and this will only take a minute. So first thing we want to do is we want to add an ethernet controller. We're going to name this FPP zero and description is completely up to you. If you want to name that anything for vendor, we want to select FPP from the drop down here. And then for model, we want to select either Pi 4 virtual matrix if you're running off a of Pi 4 or just standard virtual matrix for any other type of Pi. The ID should auto populate next in line if you have other controllers. Just make sure that you have a lot of these check marks are going to come in by default the way that they should be. I'm going to put in the controller's IP address and we're going to use a protocol at DDP. Highly suggest that. There's really no reason not to use DDP. So the next thing, after we click save, we're going to go into layout and we need to make a matrix here. So most TVs projectors are going to have an aspect ratio. Majority of the time, it's going to be something like 16 by nine. However, your results may vary with the display device that you have. If you're off by a little bit, it's not the end of the world. You just might not fill up the entire display. The way to set that is going to be by hovering over number of strings. And if you hover over that, you're going to see that it says this would also be the height of the virtual matrix. So what we want to do is that 16 by nine aspect ratio, 16 is usually going to be the width where nine is going to be the height. Usually any resolution is going to be width by height. So since this is going to be the height of our virtual matrix, I like using 14 as a multiplier it seems to give me good density, but not huge, uh, file type or file sizes or render times. So we're going to take 14 times nine and that comes out to be 126. Once we have that done, we're going to notice we get a lot more pixels on our vertical columns. The next thing we're going to do is hover over nodes per string. And if we hover over that, it's going to tell us that this would also be the width of the virtual matrix. We want to take that 16 by nine aspect ratio, 16 is the width. We're using 14 as our multiplier here. So we're going to take 16 times 14 and that gives us 224. And that gives us a nice little dense virtual matrix here. So we're going to click save. We aren't going to assign a controller on this page. We're actually going to hop back to the controllers tab. We're going to click on the controller we just added and come down to visualize. So if you selected Pi 4 virtual matrix, you'll have two virtual matrix outputs here where on uh, most other Pi's, Pi 0's, Pi 3's with a single HDMI output, you're only going to get one virtual matrix. So we're going to take our matrix model here and slide it over and assign it to virtual matrix one. Close. We're going to hit save. So now we have that virtual matrix assigned to the HDMI port on the Pi. Now we can go into the sequencer. I'm not going to go into sequencing these. There's a lot of different ways you can do them. I have a quick sequence made up right here and it's very simple. It just says tune to 97.5. I adjusted the Y axis between these two to get them kind of to fill in the display nicely and not overlap. 
So we are going to save this sequence and then under Tools, FPP Connect, we want to find the Pi controller that we want to run our virtual matrix off of. Kind of the easy cheap way or cheat way is going to go to Pixel Hack Cape and look for the one that has virtual matrix under it. We want to make sure that is checked as a virtual matrix. That'll actually upload the outputs as a virtual matrix instead of traditional pixels. And we want to make sure that we have upload checked. I like uploading local models. Uh, if there's a song attached to it and you need to play off that device, you want to upload the media as well. The next thing that you want to do is select the sequence that you saved. And so here's the sequence that we just saved right here. It's checked, so it's going to upload. So the next thing we're going to do is click upload. Depend on your file sizes and uh, connection speed, that can take some time. Um, since this is very small and easy sequence, it went pretty quick. So since we got that done, we have a sequence in FPP. We have the configuration auto upload from the FPP Connect. We're going to go right into FPP. So here I have a Pi Zero running FPP. There's a couple of things that we want to do first. We want to go into status control and then FPP settings. And under the audio video tab, we just want to make sure the default video output device is set to HDMI. That's just going to make sure that it's pushing the video out through the HDMI port. And then the next thing that we want to check is under the system tab. Under that tab, you're going to notice blank screen on startup and force HDMI display. We want those to be checked. Uh, blank screen on startup is just going to not show information as it starts up, like your IP address, uh, the kind of boot process that Linux goes through with all the different lines of text, yada, yada, yada that only the smart people know how to read it. Um, and then force HDMI display is just gonna make sure that we're pushing it through the HDMI again. Once we have those checked, you're probably gonna have to reboot if you change them, do that reboot, and you should be good to go, but we are just gonna double check our outputs real quick. So under input, output, and then channel outputs, virtual matrixes live under this other tab. So we're gonna click on other and here is our virtual matrix. We just kind of want to make sure that our start channel and channel count match what's in X lights. So if we go to our controllers tab here, we will notice that it starts on channel one and it's 84,672 channels. We're gonna hop back into FPP, starts on channel one, it's 8,400, or sorry, 84,672 channels. If we had to change anything, some probably happened between X lights and FPP, and I would do all your changes inside of X lights and not really mess with stuff inside of FPP itself, unless you absolutely need to. If you notice that your display is upside down, this invert option right here is pretty powerful. However, you can change it by uh, adjusting the start position within X lights for your matrix as well. So if we change anything, we would click save. It would ask you to restart FPPD. We would do that. Since I didn't change anything, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna click on status control and let's play this sequence that we uploaded. So now we should have a sequence playing right here. Um, that's the one that we uploaded from X Lights. Like I said, setting up a virtual matrix is super simple. There's a ton of ways to integrate them into your sequences or into your show. Uh, if you want to use something in the off season, if you have an extra pie laying around an old TV or projector, kind of no reason not to add one into your display. They're super easy to deploy, only take a few minutes and no pushing pixels.